holidays. I'm Cindy Shu, and we are so glad to be with you for this special presentation as we celebrate the season. We'll be looking at how being better together makes this season and really everything just brighter. At its heart, it's people coming together, working together, and making a difference in our communities. We saw it and lived it over and over again throughout the year in ways big and small. Oh my God, it's Christmas in, in, in August. I can't even say what it means. I feel blessed that I'm able to make donations. Anything I can do to help offset some of that food insecurity. Everybody deserves at least a tiny bit of a chance. We need to be in places where kids are when things aren't. Every one of these is a family sitting around a table. Just want them to know that everything is going to be okay. It's just a blessing for me and my family. We're just going to continue coming down here, working with great volunteers like those from CBS and Paramount. Yeah, yeah. Good job, Rob. How about everybody gets on TV? Yeah! Just before Thanksgiving, members of our CBS New York family took part in our very first season of giving food drive, setting up locations in New York and New Jersey. Our team checked in throughout our morning show, inspiring viewers to come out and donate. So we're here at Livingston at the shop, right, where we are collecting turkeys, we're collecting canned goods, and we're also able to collect a few dollars because you know what every dollar will provide three meals and that is the work of the community food bank of new jersey and as you just saw i've got some friends here with me so come on down here to the shop right we have jesse mitchell and otis livingston here thanks for so much for being here guys today tell me why you're here jesse well, I had to come out. It is the season of giving, and so it's just great to be out here, see all these beautiful smiles as people give back to their neighbors. That's what it's all about. It's and you cross the border today. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, I'm not in Harlem, but hey, the need extends beyond the community that I cover, and so that's why we're out here is just to help people in every part of our coverage area. That's right, and my partner in crime here, Otis. Hey, glad to be How's here my you. man O doing today? Doing great. Who wouldn't want to come out and see a guy with a chicken or what was it a rooster? What was that? <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know what it was. But you know, yeah, like just said, it's it's the season of giving, you know. Um, just being able to come out, give back, help assist, you know, with some people that are less fortunate than we are. My CBS crew here. How you guys doing this morning? Doing great. great. Good. Awesome. Awesome. And they have also <laughs> CBS swag for anybody who donates. Yes, this bag right here designed by our graphics department. I happen to love it, so shout out to them. Now I want to bring you over to our cutest and littlest volunteers. We've got a turkey here, but her real name is Max. How you doing, Max? Good. All right, so what is going to be your strategy to bring in donations this morning? Uh, uh, I don't know. You don't know? Oh no, she's got to work on her gobble gobble. Gobble gobble. <laughs> All right, and how about you, young lady? How you feeling? Good. And your name is? Braylon. That's right. And how old are you? Nine. Nine. And your grandfather told me you woke up at five o'clock to be here this morning. Is that correct? Yes. Why did you want to get up so early to help? To help other people. This started in 1980 here at the New York Common Pantry. They fed about a modest 30 families at the time. Now, almost 10 million me meals later, I want you to see what's going on here. All this food, so you see dried goods and whatnot, all being packaged and ready for delivery today. I love this. We're just making friends and telling stories. This is Sarah and Mary. How many turkeys did you guys bring today? Uh, two. Why? Because we wanted to help people who don't have turkeys. I think that is so sweet. Together, we help collect turkeys and other food donations, plus cash contributions. And we all had a chance to get out and meet our friends and neighbors. CBS 2's Jessica Moore captured the efforts.
Generous shoppers across New Jersey spent their time and money on Saturday giving back to their neighbors and meeting members of the CBS2 family who were on the ground in Livingston, Denville, and Parsippany. Tell us about this season of Thanksgiving and why you're here supporting the community food bank in New Jersey. Well, first of all, Thanksgiving is my absolute favorite holiday of the year. It's not about gifts and it's really just about family being grateful, being thankful. And I feel blessed that I'm able to make donations. What kind of a lesson is this for parents like you to teach their kids about need and giving? Oh, hopefully a good lesson that shows them that uh, when we're fortunate to have enough food that we can give to other people who may not. John Elliott Look spoke with a man donating Jim, cans of soup. A lot of good people out there who just had some tough breaks in life, John. So anything that I can do to help, you know, it's a better world that way, I think. From turkeys to canned goods, the folks who run the Community Food Bank of New Jersey say even a small donation makes a big difference in the lives of families in need. And this year, many more families fall into that category than ever before. I think every dollar that you give equals three meals, so that can feed a person for an entire day. Years passed before the pandemic, many people focused on just homeless people, but it's people like you and I every single day that are, may have a mortgage payment, they have a car payment, car insurance, and at the end of the day where food was always a top priority, now it's taking care of everyday living and food comes at the end. So it's everyday people that have a need to eat. Some shoppers even left and returned with more turkeys to fill Thanksgiving tables across the area. Every one of these is a story because every one of these is a family sitting around a table that would be empty without this. In all, CBS2 viewers helped the Community Food Bank of New Jersey collect more than 2,000 turkeys and hams to be donated, proving once again that we are all better together. Happy holidays, everybody. I'm John Elliott. You know, food insecurity and meeting the needs of the hungry is a year-round challenge, but the urgency is always more profound during the holidays. I had an opportunity to tour the Community Food Bank of New Jersey to get a better understanding of the enormous scope and effort that it takes to help the hungry. Everything about the Community Food Bank of New Jersey is big. Their North Jersey warehouse is 285,000 square feet. That's five football fields. They serve 800 food pantries, soup kitchens, food and family centers around the state. But perhaps the biggest number of all is the hardest to comprehend. Last year, they served 85 million meals. That number is profound proof of how many people are hungry in our area. I think people need to understand it's not just people in poverty. There's a middle class, if we have that anymore, who need uh, food, have food insecurities just as well. Food and family are important this time of the year, but meeting those food family needs this year is going to be challenging. We feel that every family deserves a great Thanksgiving meal, and we're going to try our hardest to make that happen. They couldn't do it without volunteers like James here, who managed to give and get at the same time. For me, it, it brings a lot of joy to my heart because I know that some child is going to go to bed full. It's a little sad sometimes when we hear the numbers and how many people are uh, in need of food, but it feels really good to give back, especially around the holidays. I'm just blessed to help as much as possible. It's all about the kids and the family. That's what it's about. If you want to help, we've made it easy. Just go to cbsnewyork.com, click on our Better Together Season of Giving tab. You'll find out about our virtual turkey drive, places to drop off food, and ways to help. At the Community Food Bank of New Jersey, I'm John Elliott with my new best friends from Ocean Healthcare. The day John visited the Food Bank of New Jersey, more than 1,000 boxes were packed. And we're continuing our Better Together Season of Giving campaign with New York Common Pantry. Their good work means food and other assistance to more than half a million people every year. Our CBS2 volunteers have put together enough produce and packaged goods to provide more than 3,800 meals in just a few hours. But that's just a fraction of the food insecurity New Yorkers face every day. Hundreds of hungry clients lined up for their regularly scheduled appointment for an allotment of fresh food. I kind of stopped going to pantries because they were just giving out canned foods and things. So when I saw this on the news this morning, I realized that I should get out here to get the fresh fruits and vegetables. Indra appreciates the addition to her home pantry, and her pockets do too. 
it's very expensive to be vegan, but it's more expensive to be sick. Benefits go beyond bags of groceries. You talk about an organization doing great work and for decades. New York Common Pantry's programs offer help with housing, finding public assistance, and learning how to cook the foods families receive. The organization served more than 6 million meals last year, and there's no sign of slowing down. We thought we were seeing large numbers during the pandemic. It's increasing. Inflation, the immigrant crisis have all impacted people's needs. Organizers rely largely on the country's largest market in Hunts Point for food that may otherwise land in the landfill. Direct access means seasonal offerings that brought in the pallet. We have plantains, we have squash, we have all kinds of um, good vegetables. It's very fresh that they don't repeat the stuff. As more families feel the hunger, the pantry needs more community members to help neighbors how they can, volunteering or donating to fill shelves with food to fill bellies. We're in a tough time. And it is great. At least somebody is helping every uh, every person. So for that, I give thanks to God. Throughout the month of December, we're partnering with the New York Common Pantry to address food insecurity throughout the community. Join us as we collect your donations at a food pantry near you. In East Harlem, Jesse Mitchell, CBS2 News. Stay with us as we take a look back at some other memorable events. Coming up, an inspiring program keeps kids in school and on track to graduate. We'll graduate from high school. We have tons of opportunities for them to learn how to develop themselves and how to set goals and how to be focused towards their visions and their dreams. Celebrate the season. We'll be right back. the excitement of students on the path to graduation. More on that in just a minute. I'm Cindy Shu and welcome back to Celebrate the Season. It is really heartening to see kids excited at school, but for some, the challenges of getting the clothes and supplies they need can make that first day a stressful time. Earlier this year, CBS 2's Chris Raggy introduced us to an organization that helps fulfill kids' specific needs and wish lists, too. Do you not want to peek in there? I do. Can I? <laughs> This is exciting. A U-Haul filled with more than 250 backpacks is unloaded by this small army from Scan Harbor in the Bronx, an organization that provides services for at-risk youth and families. These overstuffed bags are piled alongside an equally impressive haul of school supplies. Oh my God, it's Christmas in, in, in August. Donna Pierce is the associate program director who says the donated bags and supplies are game changers. That's one load off that parent bag not be able to shop for the thing that they can't afford, but somebody was able to provide it for their children. The somebodies are sponsors who come via Project First Day, a 16-year-old initiative that fulfills personal wish lists from kids buying clothes, shoes, books, and even backpacks that reflect their specific interests. Kids also get school supplies appropriate for their grade. Programs like this really make it easier for parents who are going through unfortunate financial occurrences. Olivia Murphy is a single mom of three boys and says a positive first day can set the tone for the school year. Just want them to know that everything is going to be okay. So programs like this kind of give that light at the end of the tunnel. Project First Day works with service agencies and sends out a Mad Lib style questionnaire for kids for their personal profile. These are forwarded to donors like Jason Zabatkin, who along with his staff shops for the requested items. This letter is from a seven year old girl um, who's going into second grade. Her favorite subject is math and she wants to be a doctor so that she can help kids. Her favorite thing to do is to sing and dance, and she wants to read books about music and cooking. Her favorite color happens to be purple. Those letters make them real, and it helps us hopefully help them in some small way. Something else that sets this initiative apart, donors tuck their own letters of support to the kids into the backpacks they fill, like this one. My children are grown now, but I remember how much they enjoyed sixth grade. It's special to know that someone is out there cheering for them. You know, yes, you can do it. Larissa Albert says she spends about $100 filling bags, but adds the personal connection is even more valuable. Back at Scan Harbor, Murphy reads the letter that she knows will touch her son's heart. But I'm really appreciative, um, Brian, whomever you are. 
Happy holidays, everyone. I'm Hannah Klieger. We know there are challenges for students beyond just that first day. And with the help of a local nonprofit, we saw the contagious positivity of kids dedicated to staying in school and on track to graduate. Take a look at the faces of the young people in this auditorium. They're excited, they're clapping, they're cheering. Their eyes are fixated on what's going on on the screen. And that is important because the message this organization is trying to send is going to affect them in the future. The energy is through the roof. Around 13,000 students from all across the city are listening, dancing, and learning. Students are so encouraged. They feel so excited after attending a day like this. It's the 14th annual pep rally organized by the nonprofit with programming that includes speeches from lawmakers. Education is the highway to success. If you want to achieve something, anything in life, you have to commit the time. Artists and performers. Purpose and passion is why you were born and what will take you into the spaces that you so truly desire. And movers and shakers in their communities. But they don't have to just join dream about being older they could be they can see representation of it on the stage students participated in a career expo all with the goal to get them to think about the future it feels really nice it's kind of nerve-wracking too because you know I have to put my best foot forward we always have to be career ready so we also have to know information about what we need to do to graduate. Leaders at the nonprofit say since they founded the organization, they've worked with hundreds of thousands of students to keep them involved in their own education. I'm most excited to see like the students' reactions. I feel like when you think about an organization like this, you don't really think about seeing it on this big of a scale. And many of these students say they feel appreciated and invested in. Seeing all the youth here really empowers me and it inspires me to do the best that I can in life. I think that even after the event, I will graduate is, some, is, is, is a program that will always be there for you. And many of the young adults that are now mentoring and volunteering with the program were actually alumni of the program themselves and fell in love with the mission and the message. At Barclays Center in Brooklyn, Hannah Cleaver, CBS 2 News. There are all kinds of obstacles to graduation. Our Carolyn Gussoff shares the story of one very, very special student who defied the odds with grit and determination. He had the hand flapping, he was walking on his toes, was avoiding eye contact, and they told us um, pretty much he was severely autistic and that there was a good chance he may never ever speak. They told my parents I would never be anything at age two. My the rest of my life would be nothing. The diagnosis was devastating, low-functioning autism. Joseph Falco was withdrawn and nonverbal. His mother fought for early intervention. Speech, special ed and OT that came to the house. Then when he was three, he went to a special ed preschool. Fast forward 14 years. The valedictorian for the class of 2022 is Joseph Falco. <laughs> you heard right, Joseph is Copec High School valedictorian. <laughs> An achievement, he says, that sends a message. I've been able to become valedictorian, but everybody deserves at least a tiny bit of a chance to show what they're made of. His diagnosis now, high-functioning Asperger's. His GPA, 104.4. He's worked hard to advocate for himself and overcome. I have never been good at being able to talk with people or getting myself some friends. Therapy has taught him social cues, which he now seems to have mastered. <laughs> Starring in theater, he even founded the high school debate club. For someone who's never been able to express himself when he was very young, did I turn out to be very expressive? The message that it sends to other students is just be who you are and you'll be successful. His mother believes there is a lesson in Joseph's success. Don't count your kid out. You don't know. And he's going to make his mark in the world. I don't think you should see your disability as a disability. It's not your weakness. For all of us, it's our superpower, and it's what makes us strong, unique. Joseph is headed to Hofstra University with a goal of a career in cybersecurity with the FBI. But first, his speech as valedictorian will focus on overcoming challenges. In Copac, Long Island, Carolyn Gussoff, CBS 2 News. Thanks, Carolyn. We'll be back with more Celebrate the Season. 
Welcome back to Celebrate the Season. We hope you're having a great holiday and we're happy to have you with us as we take a look back at the stories that touched our communities and our hearts. It might seem like a distant memory, but just a few short months ago, we were getting ready for beach season. And in true Better Together fashion to make sure our shorelines were ready, Vanessa Murdoch brought us out to Queens for a much needed seaside cleanup. Plastic bottles, wrappers, foam, old tires, and other unidentifiable debris clutters Big Rock Beach. There's a rusted out rig too. It's heartbreaking to see all the trash and the plastic all the time because it really looks like nobody cares. Lifelong College Point resident Jim Clevin reflects on his childhood when this beach was the place to be in summer and this Big Rock the main attraction. Everybody in the neighborhood would want to have their photograph posing on the rock. He would jump off Big Rock and enjoy the cool waters of Flushing Bay. The glory days seem long gone for the beach that boasts a beautiful view of LaGuardia and we're told unparalleled sunsets. But Coastal Preservation Network has big plans to bring it back. It's really going to be a jewel for this town. President Catherine Servino tells us last month they removed a deck barge, paid to have it cut up and hauled away. Volunteers secured the stairs to boost access to. When you look at the beach, it still looks polluted, but you can really see the potential for it now. The next cleanup here at Big Rock Beach is scheduled for Saturday, April the 30th. CBS 2 News will be here to help Coastal Preservation Network get the job done. We will be working together to um, get dirty, get our hands dirty, you know, and fill up lots of bags of trash, fill up a dumpster. Get this beach back in summer shape and offer this reef a better chance at survival. Senior scientist Dr. James Servino says reefs prevent shoreline erosion, clean the water. And they're sucking up CO2 like little vacuum cleaners. But not when this happens. Look at this, this foam and sort of these plastics that are clogging the intestinal tracts of these of these shellfish. One muscle sucked a part of a toothbrush. Not at all what should be happening along our shores. Everybody should come out and volunteer, I think. Volunteer Miriana Karsik describes the challenge to keep College Point shorelines clean as constant. But the end result, a big rock beach kids can again enjoy worth every bag of trash removed. From College Point, Queens, Vanessa Murdoch, CBS 2 News. And CBS2 made good on that promise to get back out to Queens for a big Better Together Beach cleanup. Our John Elliott led our live morning coverage. This is Big Rock Beach, and that's the Big Rock right there. Uh, you're looking at LaGuardia right there, and then obviously Manhattan well in the distance. But it's just this beautiful scene. But then when you take a closer look, you look at all this. So that's why we're doing the cleanup, the recyclables here, the trash here. I want you to meet my new best friend. Hey, Catherine, Catherine, come on over here. So this is Catherine Servino. She is with the Coastal Preservation Network. And Vince, go ahead and show them this. This is a pile that we just created. What is, what are we looking at? Um, we're looking at a lot of trash that has been dumped, trash that's dumped down the hillside behind us, trash that washes up on the beach. Um, just. It always seems that every time we come to this beach to do a cleanup, there's still plenty of trash to be taken. So it comes from a lot of sources, but we're definitely determined to, with the help of all of these great volunteers, to really take back this beach after a lot of years of neglect. So we have a big dumpster up there, but all of this stuff, we just have to like, I mean, that's iron, that's steel, a lot of plastic, a lot of this stuff. I got to be careful here. A lot of this is this, this, yes. this is flotation stuff, comes off a boat and then the water shapes it into this you know, almost alien looking stuff. Talk a little bit about the volunteers. Yeah, so the volunteers are really wonderful. We have people from the community. We have people from local school groups who come and they earn community service. This is St. Luke's, right? Uh, I believe these are St. Luke's volunteers. Um, we also have students from Malloy. We have, of course, wonderful CBS volunteers who came out en masse today. And people who just live in this community and really many of them never even knew that this beach existed, yeah. you know, which is amazing. Um, but now that they've discovered it, they're really excited about it and want to make it better. Yeah, and it's funny because there's a guy way over there, Charlie. He just saw Vanessa Murdoch's story on this, so he's here. And over my shoulder, I've got a series of bosses. I've got a boss and a boss's boss here, so it doesn't matter where you are in the organizational chart at CBS. A lot of folks here come. There's Charlie, the 
There's Charlie. Come yeah. here, come here, come on over here. Go ahead. Right, this is just funny because if nothing else, I want to put Charlie's hat on TV. So get ready for this. So I think the hat says it all. It says once and forever a College Point kid. Oh, I love it. You saw Vanessa's piece, right? I did. And you grew up here. Your paper route stopped a block Absolutely. from here, and you just wanted to help. Absolutely. I don't live in Glen Cove anymore, but uh, you don't live here. You live in Glen Cove. I'm sorry. I don't live here anymore. I live in Glen Cove. <laughs> I got it. And uh, I just wanted to come back and give something back to College Point because it gave me a great childhood. Yeah, this is great. It's a great place to grow up. I love stories like that. Looking forward to more stories. Oh, and by the way, I haven't forgotten. We do our shop local. We're going to shop in College Point. A friend of Cat has a great fitness place that uh, takes it to a whole new level. Happy holidays. I'm Carolyn Gussoff. Big Rock Beach wasn't the only community beach cleanup effort. Earlier this year on Long Island, we introduced you to the long-standing efforts of Operation Splash and their incredible impact on our waterways. I'm a debris picker. We're a gobologist. That's what we do. We seriously go out and pick garbage. Meet Long Island's volunteer garbage pickers. Landing on uninhabited marshes, hunting down and removing hundreds of tons of litter every year. A dirty job in the heat and the cold, day after day, decade after decade. Operation Splash is on a mission. It's never ending. I get frustrated. Tires, tents, and children's toys, balloons, beach balls. People just throw them down and don't think about where they're going to end up, and it's ruining this incredibly beautiful um, landscape. It may seem like a miserable chore, and yet... A group of nice people, and we're, we're making a difference. 150 volunteers on seven donor-funded boats do this every day. This is the Tuesday crew. Operation Splash in its 32nd year is trying to get to plastic before it breaks down into tiny pieces. They turn into little microplasties, and we eat them and the fish eat them and it's in us. So we have to stop this cycle of littering. The litter goes into the storm drains and then it goes flushes right out into the waterways. That's right, much of this is from road litter that's made its way from storm drains. One solution that's used elsewhere, storm drain netting that catches litter before it makes its way into our waterways. But cleaning that is very expensive. Until that's done, will be out here. You feel like maybe you made a little dent, a little change. Their message to litterers. Who do you expect to pick it up? It's our planet. It's our place. That's what we do. Until those who litter stop doing what they do. In Long Beach, Long Island, Carolyn Gussoff, CBS 2 News. Thank you to everyone at Operation Splash for all the work they do. We have more inspiring, better together stories coming up. One, two, three! We need to be in places where kids are when things aren't wrong. Celebrate the season. We'll be right back. Happy holiday and welcome back to Celebrate the Season. Food is always a focus of the holidays, but as we know, putting a meal on the table can be challenging for some. A former chef on Long Island has made it his mission to make sure that members of his community do not go hungry. CBS News' Jenna DeAngelis has the inspiring story. First the food was prepped and now it's being packed. We're doing an assembly line. To deliver to those in need across Long Island. This year, once again, there was a need for it. Ryan Carroll started this effort back in 2020 after losing his job as a chef in New York City. It told me how to be resilient, you know? Like I could have just given up. I never stopped moving and that continues to this day. We fed over half a million people, 500,000 meals since March 17th, 2020. Through his nonprofit, Carol's Kitchen. This Thanksgiving, teaming up with other charities, including Belmore Kiwanis, to feed as many veterans, elderly people, and families as possible. Food prices have gone up in the past year across the board from flour, everything. Turkey this year was very expensive. Do a lot of fundraising in order to pull this off. Since Monday, hundreds of volunteers have been gathering at the Belmore Knights of Columbus to assemble meals, including retiree Jim Silberger. People on Long Island don't understand the food insecurity that so many of our neighbors live with, and anything I can do to help offset some of that food insecurities I get involved with. 
It's a team effort. Nonprofit Liga de Justicia Foundation is taking 500 of the meals to Riverhead and Brentwood. It's hugely important. You know, the community that I work in, which is predominantly Latino, um, there's a tremendous need. Carol, too, is hitting the road. We're going to deliver meals to a family of five. Going door to door to deliver a happy Thanksgiving to those who need it most. I can't even say what it means. It's just a blessing for me and my family. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. By the end of the three days, 8,000 meals will be delivered to those in need. In Belmore, Long Island, Jenna DeAngelis, CBS 2 News. In the midst of the holidays, we can find ourselves all wrapped up and just trying to keep up with everything. But in this season of giving, it can also be a time to recognize people around us, maybe even have dinner with a stranger. CBS News' Jessica Moore takes us to one where those strangers come together from places as different as corporate offices and homeless shelters. The tables are set and a festive atmosphere awaits. Most attending are strangers, but here coming together to meet their neighbors. When you bring people living in homes and people living in shelters to have dinner side by side, both really come away feeling humbled and inspired. This Meet Your Neighbors dinner is the brainchild of Adina Lichtman. She's the founder and CEO of Knock Knock Give a Sock, a charity that has collected and distributed more than three million pairs of socks to the homeless and people in shelters. We engage corporate companies that collect socks in their offices to actually meet the recipients of those sock donations. Most of them don't actually even know people who've experienced homelessness. Lichtman sets the tables for about 30 shelter residents and 30 corporate employees to come together for dinner. Jordan Gosen and Emin Sukenik brought their colleagues from Newmark Real Estate in for this one. And I expected to be uncomfortable, but it was like amazing. Like one of those experiences where you're energized and excited. You gotta come in open-minded, right? You gotta come in and say, I'm going to just sit here and listen. Lichtman puts what she calls icebreaker questions at each place setting to get the conversation started. It's my very first, and I'm having a wonderful time. Meeting these folks helps you understand what it is that they're going through. Oftentimes we hear about folks going through a really difficult time, but you never really get to interact with them. And most importantly, some lasting friendships have come from these events. Kenneth Roberson and Ariel Disick say they just clicked when they met several months ago. Today is Disick's first visit to Roberson's brand new apartment, his first after several years in the shelter system. Welcome. He's an amazing friend and he always like calls to check in and, and see how I'm doing. I always end the call feeling just so much better and, and lighter. So she's all that and a bag of chips. To gain a friend meant the world to me. Somebody that understands, you know, you know, the journey. Coming up, we'll take you along on some of the many miles we covered for so many worthy causes. Plus this. We'll do a little bit of our part each day to make our country a better place to live in. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Cindy Shu, and you're watching Celebrate the Season, a look back at some of the community events that show how we are really better together. This may be the season of giving, but it's also the season of cold weather, and there are many organizations that generously give out coats to help keep our neighbors in need warm in winter. CBS 2's Ania Maldonado shows us how they really do make a difference. It was all smiles Tuesday morning inside the gym at the Franklin D. Roosevelt School on the Lower East Side. I have um, one in fourth grade, her name is Janae, and I have Pedro, he's 3K. Parents such as Jin Hunter grateful for a special surprise on this Giving Tuesday, new coats just in time for the winter season. This is a good source of making sure of all our kids are warm this winter. In talking to the school staff, there's a lot of asylum seekers, kids in transitional housing um, who are present at this school. The enrollment numbers grow every day and sometimes kids come to school unprepared. There's nearly 400 students here at Franklin D. Roosevelt and every single one is going home with a brand new jacket today. The giveaway was made possible by nonprofit Operation Warm in partnership with Nordstrom. They're set to distribute 20,000 coats this season to students across the U.S. and Canada. We know how important it is, especially in New York. It's cold. 
uh, to give that emotional warmth as well as just uh, you know true physical warmth, and there's nothing more important than a coat. It's a basic need. Greeted by a DJ and a dancing reindeer, <laughs> students were able to pick out a coat in their favorite color, whether blue, purple, or green. The kids in grades K through 8th also spending time with WNBA Connecticut Suns player Jasmine Thomas, who says she hopes events like these inspire others to give back this holiday season. I think if everyone could kind of have that mindset, we'll do a little bit of our part each day to make our country a better place to live in. From the Lower East Side, Zinnia Maldonado, CBS 2 News. In other keep warm news, a local designer's generous donation was as inspiring as it was stylish. CBS 2's Jesse Mitchell has this well-dressed story. This $100,000 donation will fund fashion programming for kids at Brotherhood Sister Soul for the next year. And Dapper Dan is lending a hand to open those opportunities. <laughs> To celebrate the launch of his new line of hoodies by the Gap brand, the Dap Man decided to give back in a bigger way to his hometown, curating this collection for the culture. After Trayvon Martin, I, I was so preoccupied with how people of color are stigmatized in a hoodie. So when I say now I have a chance to take advantage of the opportunity to destigmatize that. A candid conversation followed his journey from the streets of Harlem to streetwear icon, and the crowd went wild when another local legend, rapper ASAP Ferg, showed up to perform. In a quieter part of this brand new Brosis headquarters, I sat down in the meditation room with co-founder Kari Lazar White to discuss the impact these interactions can have. A lot of our work is about exposure. It's about helping young people to understand the possibilities of the world. We're developing agency in young people. We're helping them to really identify their goals for their life, develop a moral and ethical code. What does it mean to be men and women, leaders, brothers and sisters in your community? And over the next year, Dapper Dan plans to call up his designer friends to continue the conversation here, showing these students a new path to success. In Harlem, Jesse Mitchell, CBS2 News. Throughout the year, we've been part of other incredible community events that showed how we were all better together. Collectively, thousands of people walked and ran hundreds of miles for worthy causes, the rubber literally meeting the road to promote awareness and support. Take a look. These walks are a big part of what we do. This is my 13th buddy walk. I feel amazing and I'm grateful for everyone from the Valerie Farm. How great is it to have everybody back in person here it at Central Park? It's so wonderful to have everybody back here. It's been three years. People are excited. The energy is so high. We are all here to raise money. This foundation supports so many survivors of suicide. One night, one goal, stop suicide. There are so many people who are suffering from mental illness in silence. I vowed to wage a war against pancreatic cancer and we'll be here until it's won. Thank you, Melissa, thank you. My 20th year walking in great stride. We're going to see some real advances, and I think we're going to be a part of that. Nobody's well off when you have a family member with cancer. You need all the help that you can get. We're not alone. This is for a brother, my brother Jonathan. Yeah, it's right. CBS2 is a real proud sponsor of this event. Yeah. I want to hear it get loud out here before we start. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And as Cindy said, you are not alone. It's always inspiring to walk with so many dedicated people. You don't even feel the miles ticking by. Stay with us, there's more to come as we celebrate this season. Welcome back. We hope you're having a wonderful holiday. Over the last year in communities throughout the city, we've looked at innovative programs aimed at keeping our kids safe. Our Christine Johnson highlighted one run by the NYPD. The Mo Better Jaguars gather Wednesdays at Betsy Head Park in Brownsville. What may appear as a typical practice session is actually crime prevention in the eyes of coach Christopher Legree. 
Time spent here is time not spent on the troubled streets that surround this park. Coach Legree still thinks about the kids who succumb to the danger. I can't, uh... <sighs> Today, the renovated park is a safe space to practice and families to gather, thanks in part to a partnership with the NYPD. What is the biggest threat for these kids right now? Gangs are the number one problem. Assistant Commissioner Kevin O'Connor believes youth outreach is essential to drive down crime. One, two, three! So when these privately funded teams take the field, the NYPD has cops on patrol, creating a positive opportunity for neighbors and neighborhood cops. We need to be in places where kids are when things aren't wrong, when it's just, hey, we're having practice on Wednesday night. There's the cops again. They're in the park. They're walking around. They're saying hello. They're throwing the football around. The same effort is happening just over a mile away in East New York, a first of its kind community center, fully staffed by the NYPD. Basketball, martial arts, even a recording studio is offered here. But perhaps most influential is the one on one time cops and kids bonding over video games and conversation. They learn your side of the story, and you learn their side of the story. Would you miss this place if it closed? Yes, because I feel like this place helps kids get out the street. Site director Monique Porter says this too is crime prevention at work. I've seen the anger disappear. I've seen kids who don't really have anywhere to go after school and don't want to be home. The community center is funded by the city, but other programs use funds from seized assets. Four million dollars in drug money transformed 12 NYCHA basketball courts. Other forfeitures fund Saturday Night Lights, a program that gives kids access to over 100 gyms at schools across the boroughs. Asset forfeiture into transforming broken down public spaces, for, particularly for young people, is got to be part of our overall plan. When we first started, the drug addicts, the alcoholics, they used to walk through the game. Though progress has been made back here at Betsy Head Park and in other programs, coaches and cops are realistic about what they're up against. Gangs and gun violence remain a constant threat. But the hope is working together can be a positive force in the communities and create safe spaces for kids. It's a tough place to be, um, but that's why we focus our efforts here. Amazing work and incredible programs by the NYPD and private partners. Thank you for that, Christine. And on a smaller scale, but just as vital, CBS 2's Hannah Klieger shows us a local anti-violence program that recently opened a new headquarters as a safe haven for kids in Brooklyn. It's the start of a new era for Operation Hood, a cure violence program based in southern Brooklyn. This week was the official opening of their brand new headquarters on Mermaid Avenue. The only reason why we exist is because Coney Allen needed a healing. Our people have become desensitized to gun violence. The leaders with the group, founded in 2016, say this is an expansion of their programming, which includes help with job search, tutoring, mentoring, and more. You have to have a relationship with the, 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 the young people out here. The new space is meant to operate like a community center. Video games, a place to hang out, and a full workout gym are available on site. And that'll be your workout right there. Free and open for all. A lot of these kids don't have fathers and mothers in their life. We're just trying to show them that we could be uncles and aunts. Operation Hood, which stands for Helping Our Own Develop, works under the Jewish Community Council of Greater Coney Island. Their goal is to reach young people early and make them catalysts for change. Something has happened to me that made me want to actually give back to the streets that myself and a lot of brothers and sisters like myself helped to ruin. And they've got a busy schedule. This weekend will be the start of an eight-week summer fitness intensive open to all. When you have a healthy body and a healthy mind, you know, you're able to think better. We went on a tour down a few blocks to visit that gym. So these workouts are going to be pretty intense. Coach English will be leading them as a way to provide something fun and healthy to do for the community in the summer. It helps clear the airwaves. It helps when I say the airways, the mind. They want to develop young people to eventually be part of their efforts to make a better Coney Island. Hannah Klieger, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Hannah. We'll be right back. 
Hopefully by now your holiday shopping is done, it better be, and we hope you found joy giving and sharing gifts with others. Now before the holidays, CBS 2's Jennifer McLogan went out with real superheroes, including Nassau County Police and some very special shoppers for a chance to check some coveted items off their list. And here comes our back with our superheroes. Emerging from a police SWAT vehicle. Say hello to Spider-Man! <laughs> Chewbacca, Superman, Captain America, Black Panther, Batman, Flash. Oh. NASA officers trading in their uniforms for superhero costumes for the annual holiday tradition, A Day with the Kids. I feel excited and nervous. Two toys and a shirt and shoes for my brother. Seven-year-old Angie showed us her list. Each child surprised with a $150 Target gift card to shop till they drop with their cop buddies. Mom, necklace. Even at that young age, she has that joy of giving. Oh, it's fantastic. I think you're going to look great. How are you getting along with your officer here? Uh, pretty good. He's a very funny guy. I bought my first Blade Blade set. I never had one. The 50 students chosen from the Westbury School District come from families with limited extra money for the holidays or who suffered a personal tragedy. Tears of gratitude explains Katie's counselor. This is very impactful for her that they've been able to shop after going through a fire in the home. Ten-year-old Katie overwhelmed at the kindnesses, able to bring presents home. I'm feeling great that we're finally back at home. Thanks to the Nass County Foundation, and thanks to all of you for helping us spread the news that Christmas is about giving back. When I'm older, I can work as a police officer. They um, protect um, the whole world. Hopefully, you know, in a couple of years, we get them in the Explorers program. That one's it. <laughs> I got him a Grinch shirt. He's going to feel happy. This is an opportunity to uh, mix and connect with the children. Jason from El Salvador has just been given his first winter coat. That's my first uh, Merry Christmas, and I love this. Giving, sharing, bonding. Thanks so much for spending part of your holiday with us. If you want to learn more about any of the organizations we featured here today, head over to our website at cbsnewyork.com for a full list. And from our CBS New York family to all of you, we wish you a safe and joyous holiday.